Tony Crawford. I'm the product line manager for Belden's Fiber Systems. Today, we're going to talk about the Fiber Express Ultra HD, or UHD for short. First thing I want to talk about is the offering we have in terms of this patch panels. There's two different varieties of this patch panel, and they have very different uses. First one we're going to look at is what we call a housing. What you're going to notice is a housing is completely enclosed. This protects fiber inside, so it's very useful when we want to do field termination. On the other hand, we have what's known as a fixed shelf. A fixed shelf is open in the back. This is much more cost effective for certain applications, such as preterm. So it has a, a different fit inside a data center. So a little later, we're going to talk about where to use both of these products. So for a patch panel, what's important for us? Size and density. So let's have a look at how we address both of those in this family. First of all, for size, we have some different options available. Uh, in the housings, this, for example, is a 2U, so two 1U trays. We have this available in 1U and 4U as well. From a density perspective, well, that's controlled by the modules we put in. We have room for four modules per U, and we have two different types of modules that we can put in. We have very high density 18 port modules. So for example, this is 18 LC duplex ports, and this would be 18 MPO ports. And then we have standard density modules, which are 12 ports. So this would be 12 LC duplex ports, or 12 MPO ports. Um, so when we have a look at that, we can actually have very excellent density. We can go up to 72 LC duplex ports, or 72 MPO ports per U definitely industry leading from that perspective. And if we don't need the density, we can use standard density ports, replace them in our mo or replace our modules, and we can have a much lower dense density solution. So, let's talk about ease of use. One of the most important features in a patch panel is labeling. We have to be able to clearly identify circuits, and if we incorrectly identify, we can have catastrophic effects if we try to unplug something that is carrying live traffic. So we put a lot of effort and a lot of thought into our labeling. First of all, every module that we ship comes pre-labeled uh, for e indicating each port. And then we've taken a very back-to-basics approach in how we actually manage identifying which ports are where in the shelf. So what you're going to find on the back side of the drawer is a simple chart that is printed from a standard piece of paper on a standard printer using something as simple as Excel. So no special tools, no special software, no special stickers. So it can easily be maintained, easily be upgraded, easily be configured to really suit your needs. So as the transition from copper to fiber happens in the data center, we're seeing more of a need to be able to mix copper and fiber in the same patch panel. The FXUHD is absolutely unique in its ability to mix these two types of media. So what we're going to see, here I have fiber already installed in my patch panel, and through our Fiber Express Ultra HD Key Connect modules, I can simply add some copper couplers into my patch panel. So we have these available in both 6 and 8 port versions. So density versus ease of use is an interesting discussion, and there's always some trade-offs with this. So because we offer both high density and standard density, we have some slightly different features for these. What you're going to find is in the high density, these are all fixed type of adapters. Once we get these cabled up, it's going to be difficult to get our fingers up. So these have a very good fit in switch, enclo in switch enclosures, where we're going to cable it once and not touch it again. The standard density is much more user friendly. What you're going to find on these is we have a unique one inch pull out feature. This allows installers to get their fingers around the actual connector so they can easily remove it without a tool. Very helpful, very efficient. When we're having a look at other features as well on these modules, you're going to see these. These are what we call our color coded icon kits. In some applications, it's very important to be able to easily and quickly identify various circuits within the data center. Well, to do this, we have simple little icons that can slide over ports to give it some meaning. So these are available in various colors. 
What you're also going to notice is, because it's a slide over a standard port, you still maintain the color of the port. So you know what type of fiber to use when you go to make your connection. So when we're talking about modules for the FX2HD family, we have two basic types. We have what are known as cassettes for pre-terminated solutions and frames for field terminated solutions. In a frame, what you're going to find are patch cords that connect on the front side and then your field terminated trunk assemblies are going to uh, connect on the rear side. When we have a look at a cassette, very similar on the front side, this is where the patch cords are going to connect. And on the rear, we're going to use pre-terminated MPO trunk assemblies. Inside a cassette, what you're going to find is that the MPO connectors have a fan out to the LC connectors. And that's all done in our factory. So let's look at depth. Here we're looking at the Fiber Express Ultra HD housings, and we're going to notice that they are very narrow. Uh, one of the reasons why they are very narrow is that we have removed the splicing as a standard option from our patch panel housings. Uh, splicing has been in declining uh, in terms of use in recent years, especially in the data center. And we're going to see these declines continue as time goes on. So what we do have, though, to support splicing is an optional splice enclosure, which will extend the length of the patch panel slightly. So here we're looking at our standard FXUHD housings, as well as our FXUHD shelves. What you're going to notice is we have two different mounting depths available. This is what we would call our standard mounting depth, and this is what we would call our recessed mounting depth. The recessed mounting depth is important in some cases where we may have large obstructions at the top of the cabinet, such as PDUs or other equipment in the way, where we want to make sure the patch panel is tucked in just a little bit further. So let's have a closer look at the FXUHD 4U fixed shelf. What you're going to notice in the 4U fixed shelf is everything is oriented vertically with a nice big open space. This is ideal for two things. First, a main cross connect. So there we would typically use LC type connectors, lower density with the pullout so we can easily adjust things. And we have a lot of range to be able to help us with patching. The second use case for this type of environment is in the ZDA, the zone distribution area. This is typically where we'll be using MPO. So it'd be an MPO trunk on the rear and then another MPO trunk on the front which is going to run out to individual cabinets. Some of the interesting features of this type of configuration is that all the cable routing is in the lower portion of the housing. So once we have this fully full, uh, once this is full of cable, we're still able to remove a module without disrupting cable if we need to. Let's have a look at where we're actually using the FXUHD within the data center. Here's an example of the main distribution area. So in here, what we're going to find is our large core switch. And these are usually very high density switches. So we need high density patch panels to go with this. So we've selected our 18 port modules to go inside our patch panel. What we're going to find is we're using the housings because it's horizontally set up. It works very well to go into the cable managers and back out to the horizontal runs for the actual switch cards themselves. One of the things we do is once we've connected a switch, once we've put the patch cords up at the switch side, we typically don't touch those again. So the high density versions of the modules are really, really effective in this case. So here we are in a different switch cabinet. Uh, we're still in the MDA area, but what you'll see is we've we're using now a different series of switch. We're using a switch with the vertical orientation for the cards. So that poses some unique challenges in terms of patching. Typically, we want to keep our cables going vertically in this, this type of fashion so we can always remove adjacent cards without having to rewire things. So the FXUHD has some interesting features to address this. What you're going to notice on this one is I've removed the patch cord tray which is simply done with two thumb screws. This allows us to do cable routing completely vertical. So upgradability is a very important issue for data center operators. Being able to migrate from today's 10 gig to tomorrow's 40 gig and 100 gig infrastructure and reuse as much hardware as possible 
is going to ultimately provide them with the most savings. So the FXUHD definitely delivers on that. So what we're going to do here is simply upgrade from a 10 gig channel to a 40 gig channel. It's very simple. We're going to remove the cassette, retain the trunk cables, the pre-terminated trunk cables. Then we're going to connect our trunk cables into the back of a frame and slide that back into our patch panel. Now we're ready to simply add our patch cords for MPO down to the switch. So here we are in the horizontal distribution area or HDA. This is where we find those copper runs coming from each cabinet in the servers to the end of row or middle of row. There'll be a switch in this cabinet which will then also connect back to the main distribution area via fiber. So in this cabinet, we'll typically see fiber installed at the very top position of the cabinet. That's common for fiber. And what we're going to see is that our trays slide out and tilt down. This gives us very easy access to the rear side of the modules so we can actually connect them in the field. The other interesting feature is that it does tilt down and not up. Some other products on the market tilt up, which is a big problem when you're at the top of a cabinet because you will hit the top of the cabinet. Not very useful for the installer. Now, if the installer needs to get better access behind the shell, it simply slides out without any tools. Very easy removal. Then he can reach in, grab those trunk cables if he needs to, and inserting it is just as easy. We're going to slide it back into the shell and push it all the way to the back. Here we are at the back of the FXUHD housing where we've installed a one U splice enclosure. Now this is going to hold up to 144 splices in one U. So accessibility is a huge issue and it really is going to make life much easier for the installer and much faster for him to do his job. Now the same features we've put on the front side of the panel, we've also put on the back side of the panel. For example, we can still slide out and tilt down to get access to the splice trays. This whole splice drawer is very easily removable, so it can be put on a desk for much easier use, to be much closer to where the splicer is. And then when he's finished, he can simply slide it back into the tray to complete the job. Let's talk a little bit about safety. As we know, most fiber patch panels are installed at the very top of cabinets, which means typical installers need to be working up a ladder. When we're working at elevated heights, the weight of the product has a huge impact on the safety of the installer. We want to make sure we have the lightest possible products for them to hold up and install in the cabinet. Since all of the trays are removable in the FX UHD and they can be done so without tools, this leaves a very lightweight housing to bolt into the top of the cabinet and it can very easily be held with one hand and very safely done at the top of a ladder. This re reduces both time and effort to install FX UHDs.